Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. So picture this, you and the rest of your caravan settle in for the night after an epic adventure. You circle your wagons and get ready as the chef rolls out their little mobile kitchen. This is a chest that opens up and contains food and all the things needed to cook it and prepare so you can sit, relax, and regain some much needed HP. What would that look like? What would be inside of that thing? Like if I were to make my own little mobile chef kit, how would I go about doing that? Well, that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna make what I dub the chest of the wandering chef. It's a name in progress. We'll work on it. We'll workshop it. So without much further ado, let's jump right into it and level up this skill. All right, so first things first, if this is something that we're going to be using like in reality, I want some very basic functionality. Namely, I really want mine to have a way to keep cold foods cold. Now you can live off of just rations if you want to, but man, I want I want some bacon for breakfast, some sausages, ooh. If you wanna see a real good camp breakfast, check out this episode where we made one. I still want some of that. So my first thought was just to buy like a small cooler and incorporate that into it. The problem is all the real small coolers that you'll pick up at like Walmart or whatever only really last about a day before the ice is all melted. Kind of useless if I'm trying to make this a premise where you're like, out for days at a time, right? On the other side of the spectrum, you have the coolers that can actually hold for up to like 10 to 14 days, like the big Yeti coolers. But those are not only just absolutely massive, but they're so expensive. Not a thing I wanna use in a building project. So what do we do when we can't find a thing that we need? We make it. That's why you're here, we make things. So to make my epic little cooler, I started with this plastic storage box that's gonna act as my water barrier and just the container for everything. First thing I had to do though was to cut off this little lip around the edge so that it's out of the way when I go to insulate the box. I just used my Dremel for speed's sake, but you can definitely cut this away with a sharp razor knife or a handsaw if you're super careful. Once that was clear, I used some sandpaper just to smooth away any rough edges and leftover plastic. Okay, so a cooler keeps things cool because the walls of it are insulated, usually insulated by some kind of a foam between pieces of plastic. Now the unit of measurement used to see how efficient something is at insulating is called an R value. The higher the R value, the better it is at stopping that heat transference going on. So by my research, most of the higher end coolers out there on the market usually have an R value of around nine. So that was my goal, to try to get an R value around that nine if I could. To do that, I picked up some of this blue insulation board from Home Depot. It's about an inch thick and has an R value of five. This means in order to be competitive at all, I'll need to double up this foam, giving me an R value of around 10. Now, of course, it's not gonna be encased in like formed plastic and have all the best seals under the sun. So it's never gonna be as efficient as those store made units. But as long as I can get this to last more than a few days, I'm gonna consider it a victory. All right, so to cut my foam to size, I just use the container itself as a guide. This helps a lot since the walls of that container slope, so just tracing the shape onto the board is the easiest way to make sure everything's correct. Once I have all those pieces cut, I just bust out this double-sided tape here so that I can stick everything into place right onto the plastic. This way it'll stay put while I work with it. It'll also stop those walls from kind of bowing in since it is kind of a thin plastic. Doing this just helped me surround everything nice and tight and kept those inner walls exactly where I wanted them. To make sure it's staying secure, I went ahead and added some duct tape to all of the corners. Then I traced out the bottom of the cooler using the same method and taped that piece into place as well. Once that's all good to go and the foam was surrounding my plastic container, I simply rinsed and repeat, cutting out all of the other walls to size and taping them into place with my duct tape. This gives me that nice double wall of foam that'll hopefully get me that higher R value that I'm looking for. Now you might notice I left these walls tall than that container and that's just so that I can go back in with my razor knife and make sure everything's cut to the same level. Now for my lid, I just cut this little square out of foam that fits snugly into that open space at the top. Then I caked on some silicone to the top of that piece and fit it into place so that I knew that it would land exactly where I needed it before adding another cap piece to the top of that. This helps me not only double up on that foam, but will hopefully further act to seal the cooler because of how that sits into that cavity. That said, once I did kind of push that into place, I noticed that there were these little gaps that formed along the edge because my cuts weren't perfect. And that's no good because any little air gap is gonna allow the hot air to come in and melt my ice. So I went ahead and bought some of this gasket material that's usually used for sealing like windows and doors in cold temperature areas. I simply stuck this into place just to help me get a little bit of a better seal and mitigate any of that air transfer that might happen. All right, with that, the cooler section of it is pretty much all set. Stick around to the end because we're gonna test out how well that worked. But now that that's done, it's time to build the actual chest part of this project. 
rather than take the time to like glue and clamp all these boards together to make the walls like I did during my pirate chest over here, I just decided to use these already pre-glued slabs that you can pick up at Home Depot. I also picked up a bunch of these inch and a half by three quarter boards that I can cut to use as the inner framework of my trunk. The thought here is to build walls around my cooler using those smaller pieces of lumber just to frame everything out like a little cabinet. Those boards are going to give me a place to nail those glued slabs to and just add a sturdy skeleton to the whole thing. Now, since that double wall foam kind of facilitates a rather large cooler, which honestly you want, the more ice volume you can fill, the longer it's going to last. But that does mean that my trunk is going to end up being quite large, honestly. For the sizes of those slabs to actually build this thing, I ended up having to cut the end walls to be 20 inches by 17 and three quarter inches. The top and bottom are 30 inches by 19 inches and the front and back slabs are cut to be 30 inches by 20 inches. And all the boards for that inner framework were actually just cut to leave an inch on either side so that those walls can fit into place. So starting at the bottom, all I did was apply glue to the face of the board and then line it up into place using an inch thick cutoff from one of the slabs. Using something like that as a spacer will just make sure that that framework is the right distance away from the edge. I then pre-drilled all my holes to stop that wood from splitting and locked them into place with some nails. Now I know this part of it is a little light on the measurement, but really you don't have to have concrete measurements for this. I just used the thickness of the walls themselves to tell me how far away from the edges I needed those boards to be and then cut everything to size as I needed it. Using this method, I was able to build a basic frame around my box so that it was the exact height of my cooler. I also made sure it was the same width as my cooler so that it would sandwich it and stop it from sliding all over the place. You'll also notice this little front area was left open because I wanted to make a tiny pantry to put cups and food or whatever in. That said, I don't want my cooler to slide into that space, right? I need to have that space kind of walled off. So to facilitate that, I just built this tiny little wall here to separate those two spaces. To finish it off and make sure stuff doesn't just kind of fall into that gap, I also cut this tiny piece of Luon, which is just really thin plywood, to act as a wall there. Then I slid that whole wall into place and nailed it secure. This gives me this nice little backsplash to stop things from falling through. You'll also notice I put these little arms here whose purpose is twofold. One, they help keep my wall into place, and two, they give me a little spot for this tiny shelf I made to rest on. That shelf is just one board with another smaller piece of wood tacked onto the front of it to act like a little lip and stopping things from sliding off. With that all secured into place, the whole thing's starting to look like a tiny little cabinet, which is exactly what I'm going for. Okay, so with that, all of like the framework, the inner bones of this thing's in place. Now all I had to do is flip it on its sides, add glue to all those little struts, and add on my outer panels. These, like everything else, I'm pre-drilling before nailing into place. The only side I don't lock in is the one that has our little cabinetry there. Basically, this is gonna act as our door so that we can actually access that space. Okay, so for my top, the actual lid, I was just gonna use this slab here as it is. Then I realized like that wood is only an inch thick and as temperature changes and moisture happens, it's gonna start to bow and flex. It's just what wood does. So to help mitigate that and keep it as flat as I can, I just cut a couple of these pieces of oak to act as some cross bracing and stop my lid from eventually bowing. These are just glued and nailed into place like everything else. With everything together, I went over all of it with my sander to make sure everything was nice and smooth and to round off all of my edges. Now the astute of you may have noticed that I left all of the walls of my chest higher than my cooler. That's because I wanted that top area, that space, to hold all of my bowls and pans and all that kind of junk. That being said, right now there's just kind of an open space to my cooler and the little cabinetry area. So to close that off, I just cut another piece of Luan that fit really snugly right on top of everything. This is also gonna help keep my cooler sealed as the weight of it and all the pans and junk that are gonna be on top of it are gonna help push that top down, securing the seal along the side. At this point, I just went ahead and prettied the whole thing up by hitting it with a mahogany stain and trying to make everything as even as possible. I then followed that up by sealing the wool with a few coats of polyurethane. And at this point, it's looking pretty cool. I mean, it's looking like a big slab o chest, but it's looking neat. That said, I not only need to add more visual something because it's kind of boring, but I also also need ways to keep the lid shut, keep the door shut, kind of lift the damn thing. And though there's a bunch of ways this could be done with like hardware or whatnot, I just happen to have just massive amounts of leather. I have a lot of leather at this point. So that's what I decided to use. I just cut a whole bunch of leather straps out of this six ounce veg tan leather and then dyed them all a USMC black. So I decided that I wouldn't just use this leather for like straps or whatnot. I, I wanted to use it to kind of protect all the edges of my trunk. 
because that's like a pine. It's not a hardwood at all. So every time you bang it against anything, it's gonna leave a big old divot in the corners. So I started with these wider strips that I had cut to four inches thick and traced where they would land around the top and bottom of my chest. I then busted out ye oldie contact adhesive, adding it to the backs of my leather and onto those areas that I marked off on the box. This way I can stick the leather into place and get everything where I need it before going back in and securing it with some tacks. Really quickly, something happened to the footage that you should be seeing after that last scene there. But as you see here, that piece of leather that wraps around the door to the back of the trunk is all one piece. By doing this, I was able to make that strap of leather act like a hinge for the door. This way I didn't have to put on any other hardware. That worked perfectly. You'll see it a little bit more clearly later on. I just wanted to point out that that's what I did. So from here, I just went and continued this whole process, adding little strips of leather to every one of my edges to help protect the corners and overall give the whole thing kind of a cooler look. And right off the bat, because I didn't trust the strength of the glue completely, I went and threw some tacks in, in that hinge area right away. And by the way, the tacks I'm using for this project are these little cut tacks here that I got from Home Depot. The heads of them just look really rough and kind of have a medieval aesthetic, at least to me. Anachronistic, but still looks cool. Now, I like the way that leather hinge works so much that I decided to wrap this back piece all the way around the top so that I can use it as a hinge as well. Then I just went back in and reinforced all of my corners and all of the ends of those leather strips with some of those tacks just to make sure they didn't come out of place eventually. All right, so at this point, we have this badass looking chest, but I'll admit it's big and it's kind of hard to carry without handles. Like you gotta bear hug the thing to move it around. And since it is a softer wood and kind of on the thinner side, I didn't want to attach handles right to it. Also one side of it's, you know, a door and I didn't want to put a lot of stress on the leather hinges. And this honestly gave me a lot of pause. I couldn't figure out for a little bit how I was going to make that that weight bearable on the sides like that. Until I realized I wasn't, or I wasn't. There was no way to do it cleanly and, and make it so it actually held well. Instead, I decided the best way to do it was to spread out that load as much as possible. To do this, I went ahead and cut these long straps out of nine ounce leather. This beefier leather is gonna do a much better job of taking on that weight. For my handle material, I decided to use some of this thick hemp rope that I cut. I just used some thin jute rope to keep the ends together and also to bulk them up a little bit. Basically, all I did here was take the end of my strap and wrap it around my rope handle. I then punched some holes through the leather as close as I could get to that rope. This way, when I added my rapid rivets, the leather really bit into the rope and secured it into place. I did this with a second strap, making a really nice looped handle that honestly is really secure into place. I was surprised at how well this thing worked. Then I took those straps and I locked them into place with some tacks on the non-door side of my chest. By adding those tacks all the way down, I was able to spread out that load across that entire wall. Next, I slid those straps underneath the trunk to give me that security of being able to lift from the bottom and further spreading out that weight distribution. I used a ruler just to make sure they were spaced away from the edge the same amount as what was on the other side before tacking them into place at the bottom of the trunk. I then flipped that trunk over and further tacked it into place just to make sure they didn't move all around while I was sliding the trunk about. Now, of course, I couldn't loop it around and tack it in on the other side because the other side has the door and I'd never get it open again. So instead, I decided to use this D-ring here to make a kind of a buckle. Basically, I folded the end of my leather over that D-ring and then locked them into place with some rivets. This leaves me with these two strong connection points leading to the strap underneath the chest. Then I made another shorter version of that handle loop that I had made earlier on. To connect these to the box, I just use these small strips of leather that just act as more of a guide to hold that handle part roughly in place. Now all I have to do is loop those tail ends of that handle part through those rings and punch holes for a button to go through. On that uppermost hole, I just cut a little slit, which will allow that hole to open up a little bit more and help the head of a button go through. And then on the end of my leather strips, I screwed on this Sam Brown button. Now I have a way to secure that handle temporarily to those straps that leave below the chest. This will allow me to pick it up and move it wherever I want it to be. And then I can simply unbutton it so I can still access my little pantry here, which I'm not gonna lie, I'm really proud of. I'm proud of how good that came out. Now, since I had some of that nine ounce leather strap left over, I decided to run it across the top, adding another hinge out of that thicker leather to my lid. The other end of that strap hung down to the front where there was another D-ring waiting for it. This I just secured to the front with a little bit of leather. This way I could use the same exact button trick as before to give myself a nice closure for that lid. 
In fact, the button's so easy that I decided to use it one more time with this tiny little strap here that wraps around the front and helps secure my cabinet door shut. All right, a lot of work so far, home stretch though. First, I secured these little loops of leather onto the lid and attached some cordage through them. I then ran that cordage down to another loop that I had attached to the inside of that space. This is gonna make sure that my lid doesn't just kind of flop backwards and rip those hinges out. It was also around this point that I went ahead and cut that center plywood in half and gave myself a little finger pull just to make it easier to take out of that space. Now, I didn't want this just to be an open space where I just kind of threw my stuff into. I wanted it to be a little bit organized at least. So to make this happen, I started by nailing up some of this chrome tan leather, giving myself a little pocket and a strap that I could use to secure my spoons into place. For my forks, I did the same exact thing with this little strip, but I also added these two pieces of chrome tan leather tacked together, which gives the tines a little space to stab into. This not only secures them into place, but it's gonna stop me from accidentally stabbing myself while I'm rooting around, which I would totally do. For my larger utensils, I simply tacked in the strip of leather to make these little loops just big enough to lock their handles into place. And finally, on the far right side, I tacked in this little strip to hold my knife handle into place. At the bottom, there's this little loop which accepts the point of the knife, helping to keep it safely out of the way and really secure. Now, on the inside of my pantry door, I nailed in this tiny block of wood about a third of the way up. This gives me a nice little ledge for all of these vials that I have, which are full of various spices or whatever, to sit onto. Then again, just like with the utensils, I used a strip of leather and some tacks to form all of these little loops around the vials, giving them a place to stay nice and secure as I wander from village to village. I also did the same thing for my pestle, which goes with my mortar and pestle kit. With that done, I was able to stock my pantry with my mortar, my mugs, these little packets of dry rations here. Then at the top there, I filled in all of my pans and platters and bowls and just everything I need for food. And look at how dope this thing is. It holds all of the stuff I wanted it to hold and there's still room for more. Not only that, but honestly, it looks really cool. Speaking of cool, now's the moment of truth. Did our cooler work? So to test this bad boy out, I was able to fill it with four bags of ice, which is pretty great by the way and there was still enough room for food too i then left it for a week checking in on it daily sure this means opening it up every day but you'd be doing that if you were cooking daily as well right and it was the end of day five when i finally noticed there was no ice left at all in the water so i'll call this like four and a half five days of a cooler which is really good I'm, I'm happy with that for a homemade cooler yeah that's fine i mean just that cooler part took me maybe what like an hour and a half to do and cost me 30 bucks yeah all day long and i bet if you really went ahead and like reinforce those sides maybe add a little bit more insulation or, or like better way to seal it you can definitely stretch that out so there you have it the chest of the wandering chef I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, why don't you give me some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you don't release new content. You know, all the YouTube things. In the meantime though, keep leveling up you. You made it to the end screen. I really appreciate that. The YouTube algorithm gods love it when you do. That along with all the sharing and stuff is a great way to support this channel. Another great way is by joining these people's noble ranks. These are my Patreon members and they make this whole thing run. And I'd like to welcome our newest high tier level Patreon members, Nate the Clown, Val, Ba, Michael K, Teddy, and Monster. Thank you all so much. Again, I wouldn't be able to do any of this without you. So really, I really appreciate what you do here. If you'd like to support us, consider joining our Patreon, link in the description below. Otherwise, just click on one of these here and that helps a lot too. Cheers.